Well, hello, this is Dr. Chris Lamont, and this is my uh, April talk to uh, um, this year. I have been talking more or less about some of the philosophies I have to support the blog sequence. The blog sequence is having you kind of play with uh, having a new space. It doesn't matter whether the new space is a new room in your house or uh, a bigger car or build a patio in the back. Um, you, you, if you don't do something with a new space and make some plans with it, it winds up cluttered with old stuff. So last year we worked on building new ranges, which means if you're going to become potentially something and you're not that near and, and not doing it right now, you probably don't have room for it in your life. So you're going to have to have a new range, a new way of entertaining things, a new body of knowledge, a new experience, a new view, a new something, another we're not going to so much as label it because all labels become limitation. We wanted to open it up and have it a field. So that's what we play with. So I've been talking about some of my philosophies and my teaching experience as putting ideas together. When I started working, everybody would tell me when I first started that I'd say, hey, you know, to get some new potential in your life, they would come with me to they'd come to me with a problem. Uh, relationships not working or the job's not working or the neighborhood's not working or this is not going on. It's a problem, 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 problem. Okay. Um, and, and, and they're looking and they said, well, what do you think I should do? And I said, well, tell me something first that you'd want to do. What are your dreams? What are your visions? What are you building to? What do you can, what can you imagine? And let's start to talk. I, you're, you're listing all your problems. The solution, all problems for a human is dying. If you want to accomplish something, then that's called potential. And you have to work in that direction. You have to build a plan. You have to move in that direction. And they're looking at me like, uh, I just wanted you to solve all my problems. Well, I know you wanted me to solve all your problems, but I can't solve your problems. They're not my problem. So we start to talk about imagination. It has to start with some type of bigger than bigger than a bread box. It has to be imagine something bigger and better and and absolutely amazing, right? Um, because when you start out with all that, then you start to find what you can fit into the room you have. And if you've got an empty space, like if you follow the blogs you should have, then we've got a room to put it in. So now it's kind of like, okay, now we're talking to a decorator and we're putting ideas together. So when I talk about imagining, I'm saying people have a hard time imagining what they can accomplish. They always make assumptions on this is what this is all I know. Oh, you know, I don't have this kind of degree. I, I don't know math very well. I don't know. Oh, my goodness. It's like that has not got in the way of anybody, right? It, the people work. Everybody seems to work around their limitations. If you're acknowledged to your limitations, you work around them. It's like it's not a problem. None of that's a problem. And people come back and say, well, kids are amazing. OK, so I like to start with kids. Yes, kids are amazing. I've done some classes with kids. Um, and they are, are amazing, but the kids come into life with an unlimited range and they find themselves in a little piece, a little blob of biology. And it's kind of like, oh my goodness, whatever the concept of them, the concept is not a conscious piece, right? Come on. There's enough research out there now today. You can look at YouTube talks. You can read books. It's kind of like they've already narrowed it down. They can give you a medication. They can they can limit you. They can block certain things out. And you'll just change your language. You just totally change your language in a heartbeat. We don't feel the change. We adapt very quickly. We really do. Um, so before I get into some crazy stories. Um, so when I'm talking to kids, kids... Like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then we start talking back and forth, back and forth. And I hit a point where they say, well, we can't do that. Kids are here with this unlimited imagined piece trying to find out what the limitations are so that they can do something with it. They, they're talking about, look, I'm an inch taller than last year. Look at this. And I can now reach the sink. Look at this. I can get this. Look at this. I can open the car door. They're trying to not expand they're trying to come into the context of fit in the game of life what are the rules of life teach that to me mom and dad so i know what my limitations are they're 
discovering limitations to imagination. So when you start to use imagination in a new range, automatically you're saying, well, here's a new range. Let me discover out of my new ideas what I can't do. You start with the negatives because that's what you learn coming in. And I'm advocating that we do a reversal. We come in and we say, let's dream really big. And we're going to work with some techniques that might help. But it's nice to be able to say, well, it might be nice to have a million dollars. But then you talk to people with a million dollars and they have lots and lots of problems too. Now, I like the people that have problems with a million dollars because they tend to pay me more money <laughs> when I was counseling. But now that I'm retired, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, so uh, so it's, it's, it's intriguing because they have other issues, bigger issues, more complex pieces. Maybe they don't have to worry about whether they can have enough money to make it to work and back for paying gas this week. But then, you know, they're, they're sitting there with all kinds of crazy bills that we don't necessarily experience if we have less than those millions of dollars in reserves. So it all comes on a platform. It all pairs into. So, so just you start to dream big. You don't say, I want a million dollars. You want to say, I want a successful company. I want to do this. I want to do that. I don't know how many people that I've worked with that came up with ideas and said, what do you think we could go with it? I said, well, let's implement first and secure it. And they're like, well, that costs a certain amount of money. You know what? It costs a certain amount of money and it costs a lot of labor. So if you're going to do this, you have to put all the things together so you have it nicely packaged, you got a complete package, and then you get a complete package and you're doing it on a scale. And you say, okay, now, how do we scale up? Do I get an expert in to refine what I'm doing and simplify it and then scale up? Or do I find investors and then scale up? Or do I just sell the whole idea and then let them scale up? Any one of those would bring you a certain amount of abundance. So you start to take a look. If you've got a project and you're just devoted to it and you just want to see this thing, you want to see whatever, right? Mailing this and email services that can fly out of your house, drones that can take packages to mom's house, whatever. Yes, it would be nice to have a drone in my garage and I could say, oh, it's Mother's Day or it's Happy Easter or it's uh, you know Christmas or whatever. And I can just put a little package in to send a drone out. Uh, yeah, that would, you know, um, that would sound really good. Of course, then I'd probably have to sit there with cameras and navigate the drone and I'd have to not run into buildings and power lines. And, and all of it has complexity to it, right? All of it. So do they have systems in play where they use some of that for, yeah, some places they get food delivery with a drone, but it's within five blocks or six blocks. It's within the city limits. It's within, they all have a package within a context that they'd have to eventually scale up. They have to scale up. Kids are using the innovation to scale down. We can use the same thing to scale up. Energy needs to flow out more than in. Being a kid, it's all about how does that relate to me? And so now we're looking at a project and we're saying, how does that relate to me in the project? How does that relate to me in this new range? Um, <laughs> I, I did a class one time for kids. I had so many people coming. Like, Why don't you do a class for kids? And I said, you know, when you start working with kids, there's all kinds of laws that come into play. <laughs> I, I can't really go out and just, teach kids, you know? So what I can do is we can throw a party and at a party for an hour or two hours, we can have a little party and I can show kids some ideas and innovation. I am an entertainer. Maybe we can pull it off that way. So these parents and friends of parents, they found someone that's got a two car garage. It was all carpet is a nice play area for their kids. And they had, I don't know, 14, 16, 18 kids, something like that. And I had all the parents come to. And so I had all these kids in a room. We're all on the floor. And and we did a little meditative exercise. And so 
I did a little meditative exercise because I would give a kid a certain number. We had a clock there, digital clock. And I gave them a number and I said, you three guys, when that three shows up, I want you to make a sound. I don't care what sound. Ah, uh, eh, I don't care anything. Short, just for a second. And then the next number comes up. You guys are assigned those numbers. So I had all these people assigned. So I had a, a meditation exercise where everybody's sitting around on the floor, looking at a clock, waiting for the minute hand to come up. That is their moment. And they got there where their second hand to come up. Their second. So they had a second. When it says, Monday, 60 seconds in a minute. So we're, we're going around that circle. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, but then we got 11, 12, 13, 14. So I tell them, just look at the number on the right. So in one minute, they're going to get, right? How, how many how many groups of 10 can you get, get in 60 seconds? All of a sudden you start to see, we've got a game, right? And, and they're, they're making a sound and they're doing it on a clock. And, and they've got this that has no value, no structure, no nothing. It's all totally open-ended. It's like, what are we doing this? You guys make your sound. You guys make your sound. You guys make sound. Now we got a minute. We're going to do this for one minute. And we're going to take a break. We're going to talk about it. We'll do it for another minute. We're like, oh, okay. So now I've got them all of a sudden opening up. It's like, do you understand? It's kind of like they want to know why they're doing it. What is the purpose for it? What does this mean? They have a million questions, all of which I'm not going to answer. Because I just want to open it up. I want to open that up. I don't want them looking for, where's the limitation? Who's telling me what I can do and what I can't do? I just want them to have a one second experience. Oh, okay. And then you wait. Oh, right. You get, so we've got a little bit of pattern. We got a little bit of a game going. You, you guys can do this in your own life. You can start to take a look in a meditation. You don't have to sit there with some kind of crazy music going or or take pills and drugs and, and uh, flowers and vapor. If you want to, that's all fine and good. But for the most part, all you really need to do is to be able to start to see that you're changing the pattern of your redundancy. And that pretty much produces the idea of getting out of the bump, 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 bump to a different rate. Bump, bink, bump, 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 bink, bump. That's it. That's it. It's just a change. A change is what we're trying to accomplish. It all starts with a change. We're redundant. We learn something and we repeat it forever. So breaking up redundancy gets you into creativity. It's just that simple, right? Most of the time, it's a problem we haven't had before. There's no solutions for the problem. You just got to sit with it for a while and then ideas come up. That's the way it works. It just flows into it. So these kids did this couple of, I don't know, a couple of minutes in the beginning of meditation. And then after that, I would start to show them little techniques that I had taught to some of the parents. And they would start to notice energy flow in their body. They'd start to notice, like, they would start to feel the energy flow around the room clockwise and then counterclockwise. And they just become what we call energy aware. Where do I feel the movement? Remember, I believe in influence. And I'm just telling you the energy that flows influences. You go outside and the energy goes up. We call that heat. And when the energy outside and the ambient goes up, we notice it. When it gets down to 20 below, we notice it. When it gets to 99 degrees, we notice it. So if you're sitting outside, how many people say, well, it's getting too cold for me. I got to go inside or it's getting too hot. Or, Let's go in the air conditioning. We notice the energy flux. And that is just like those sounds that we made for every second. They're a silly little game because it means that we're now looking at how the energy is influencing us. Wow. So can our expression, our ideas, our interaction influence the next person in front of you? Oh, I don't know. If you've ever been on a date, you're kind of hoping it does, <laughs> right? It's like, so you see, it's like you do go to do a job interview. You're hoping what you have to say influences them. You're always looking for influence. You do a job and you're hoping the boss says it's good and not that you're fired. It's, we're always looking for influence somewhere, right? We, we cook dinner and everybody says, oh, this is the most wonderful meal I ever had. And you're just delighted. That's an influence. And that's what drives things. It breaks up the redundancy. 
if if you if you just work in a fast food place and you cook out hamburgers the same, if somebody comes over and said, Oh, that was an amazing hamburger, you know, much better than yesterday, you go, better than yesterday. I I do 300 of these every day. There is no difference. Like it, it's a meaningless piece. You start just you have to start to take a look and feel the difference. So there's an integrity in what you speak. When you start to feel the difference, you have integrity in what you speak, then all of a sudden you're showing up with presence. So next thing I know, these kids are all aware of whatever technique we got going. Oh, yeah, we had little props. And we had different things out there that kind of demonstrated the ideas I was doing. And they were all practicing this whole thing. And so I had their attention for about an hour. Man, and that's doing pretty good. They didn't get up. They didn't get fussy. They didn't get arguments. They, like, they were listening very intently to everything I said. We had all these techniques. We shared with each other. We partnered up with different people. We went around. We had a lot of fun. The parents were standing. I told the mothers, you know, like, shake your hand at me if I use, if I say something, um, some profanity or something. Every now and then I'll say, oh, what the shit or something. And it's like, oh, my God, I can't. You know, I should do that around children whatever people's rules are. So it's like, okay. So, you know, shake your hand at me if I do something. It was, it was really kind of cool. I actually did very good. Uh, I, one time I, I, I said, oh, that's a bunch of monkey shit. Uh, <laughs> and that was, got me a couple of hand wiggles. But uh, other than that, I did good with my language as I'm used to working with adults. And so it was really fun. We had a really good time. Then the after effect of that, the people that had taken classes from me, they loved it because they could all of a sudden feel like they had a better communication with their children. A little thirsty. I'd been surviving Easter and, uh, and, uh, which I mean, I had to go to someone's house and eat different foods. And so I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I have, this is, uh, a 16 ounce or a 20 ounce is a 20 ounce coffee and I have five or six in a day. So I go to someone's house for three hours and I'm sitting here and saying, oh, you like some coffee? And they pour me a cup of coffee and it's, you know, like, and I'm sitting there holding it saying, wow. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I go through a lot of coffee. Um, so the, the kids whose parents learned these tools, there was like, there was a communication to open up in a family. There was a connection that occurred in a family. The the kids would come home and mom's in a mood and they'll say, Mom, why is your why is your field all red? Why is your energy all bunched into you? It feels like you're folding in on yourself. What's the matter, mom? And the mother would look and she'd say, Okay, yes, you're right. I've got an attitude today. So you guys need to stay away from me when I got an attitude. Otherwise I could get mean. <laughs> and they laugh and they say, Yeah, okay, mom, we'll go in a room. Yeah, but the communication opens up. We're not talking about the word they said or something that or, or meanness or an intention or or why are you mad at me? No, it's kind of like they're talking about a function that they can see. It's like, wow. Or or the dad will be sitting there and they'll say, I got a question, and they'll say, Why? And he said, Dad, I'm not getting your attention. And he said, I'm thinking about something. Dad, I asked you, can you answer me a question? If it's no, that's all right. I'll ask you later. See, because already they could start to see if they, he doesn't have their attention, why should they waste their time? He's going to discount them and emotionally they're going to feel like that's not nice. So it opens up communication. Wonderful. However, where somebody had took classes, maybe some woman's sister hears stories about it, but never took any. So she wants to bring her kids. So now her kids are taking, took my class, my one, my one big class. And, and now her kids are driving her nuts. They are saying all kinds of stuff to her and she has no clue what they're talking about. Now, that was good or bad. Some of the people then came and taking cl took classes because they were trying to figure out what their kids were talking about. Other people just got really mad at me. I had a couple of people call me and say, what'd you do to my son? You know, it's just, I don't even understand him anymore, right? He's saying, I can't talk to you right now. You're you're not you're not in a receptive mood, mom. And it's like, where did he get that from? <laughs> well, I, I said, isn't that nice that he sees that you're 
got a lot on your plate. And right now, he doesn't want to talk to you until you've got time to talk to him. That's a legitimate communication, right? No, it doesn't. <laughs> That wasn't for some people. It was really kind of entertaining. I decided it's probably not something I push real heavy, um, but uh, but it was it was fun, and we you know did some other events where uh, I I had uh, I had some uh, we would do some retreats, and we did a couple of retreats for for parents where they could bring their kids with them. So we did some interactive things. Same type of thing with the kids, but the parents were taking classes and they were interacting with the kids. And that worked out really much, much better. And I didn't get so much, so much animosity from a, a couple of people that said, like, my goodness, you know, what what are you what are you teaching my kid? You know? And they'd come back and they say, you know, we're good Christians. And I said, and because because your daughter can say, determine when you're in a bad mood, that would make her a demon? Is that what you're saying? I, I'm. What's that got to do with being good Christians? Uh, just because she observes something beyond a limitation that she had before doesn't have anything to do with religion, for heaven's sakes. You know, it's like, wow. It's intriguing. It's just fun, right? So I decided that I would do some workshops using play things, a couple of seminars using play things that we would do with adults. And we did a few seminars where they would play silly little role pieces. They, they would sit down and they would have somebody, you would sit there and somebody would be angry at you. And you just sit there and listen to them be angry at you, blah, blah, blah. Or you would make a request. Someone might say, I request that you wash my car today. And you just look at them and just smile. And they say, did you hear me? I request. And then you say, well... Then you can say yes or no. And so if you said no, you had to be able to find that communication space. You had to pause. And you'd have to say, I'm not sure you're ready to hear this, but the answer is no, I'm not going to wash your car. And then they could come back and they can notice their response. Well, why aren't you going to? And so then the response come back and said, why I'm not going to is because I don't want to. Now, are you asking, is it personal? Is that what you're asking? You didn't frame it that way. But the energy came forth as you pulled back, as you said something. Is there an issue? And so you start to look a little deeper in what the body response are. You start to play with this a little bit. You start to go in. I was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> I, I I love it in in, in research. This is pre-COVID. In research, they had taken a whole bunch of kids and they had asked them all kinds of questions. There were some educational shows that were either online or somewhere on YouTube or online. I, I've never owned a TV, so I don't really know. I've never had one in my life. But anyway, there's some education shows. And so they were promoting to see if this education was a good vehicle for being able to inform kids so they would have these characters, these cartoonish characters or puppets or whatever online, and they'd be talking about a science fact. And then after the shows were over, they had over a thousand kids involved in old science project. And after they were over, they said, well, what did you learn in that show? And he said, oh, no, it was just fun. They said, well, what did you think of this data? Blah, blah, blah. He said, he said, hey, it's a TV show. So it's all made up. It's not real. And they're like, wow. So... Across the board, majority of the kids felt that information coming in through shows was not educational. It was just a fantasy. It was all just pretend. You know, it, that's why a lot of the language shows didn't really help kids enunciate or speak correctly or translate and other things. It's like, wasn't they do better one on one with another human person where you can get the interaction of what's going on the merit and the value behind it. Uh, so it was very interesting. I, and then I just kind of wondered, I, I read the experiments and I wondered, wow, it'd be nice now that COVID is, the, the the storm of COVID is over and all those kids wound up on computers taking classes. Um, and and I, 
I would just be interested to get another 2,000 kids and run a survey and see if the kids now have changed their mind. Now, if they start to see things that show up on on the video feed, whether all of a sudden they have credibility now, which they didn't have pre-time. Okay, why am I saying that? I, I was saying that because then I'd like to know how they communicated that change to the kids. That would be interesting, right? Because we're now watching, I mean, we're all watching, watching a lot more YouTube talks, tons and tons more stuff. Um, and, and I'm sure a lot more TV shows. Uh, my wife and I travel, we wound up in hotels and there for a while, we'd turn the TV on because we, we never had one. So we turned the TV on and we're looking at it, you know, and it's like, oh, my wife would say, oh, there's a show on or there's a movie on. I've heard people talking about, let's watch that movie. And of course, I'm not used to it. So we're watching the movie and it, you know, it's like every 10 minutes there's a commercial or something. And we never we never sat through more than an hour of anything. We just turn the TV off and get back into a book. And it's kind of like, wow, all, all of that, all of that interruption is just like drives you nuts. It, it's um, it's a challenge. It's kind of like talking to two people at the same time, You're like you got to kind of span your head. So I'm I'm getting the gist of what's going on over here. And this is meaningless garbage over here. It's an advertisement. I, I don't pay any attention. So I just got in a habit in an hour's time before the hour is up. I got in a habit of like, oh, okay. I'd walk over to my chair and sit down and read a couple of pages in a book in that three, four minutes. And it shows back on. I put my book down and go back over and sit. I could switch between the movie and the book. But I got nothing out of the advertisement whatsoever. It was like, it, you know, I'm sure that they were trying to pitch something or show something or demonstrate something. But I didn't know what they were talking about most of the time. No idea. It's like, yeah, you know, half the food items I don't eat, all the bells and whistles I don't have. So it's like, yeah, like, so I had no clue. So um, I can't really imagine any dis I now anymore we still travel but now anymore when we travel we don't even bother turning the tv on we're actually we actually uh, don't even think about it we, we're looking at now to when we're traveling we're looking at hotels that are near something so we can go check into the hotel and then go down the street and see something or do something or check out a particular restaurant that's maybe of interest. And then we might find a hotel near there. Well, our, our, our gauge of what we would like to see in entertainment is different. Now, why am I telling you the story? I'm telling you the story because you start to see when we open up a new range, a new value way of value structure, all of a sudden, then those criterions of what's important becomes different. Our search engines then operate differently. As its structure starts to change, it operates very much differently. The, I, I just read an ad. We were going to go up for a week. There's a little city in Washington State that's on a lake. There's no roads into it. So you have to take a boat up and then stay at the city. So we were going to go this summer up there into the mountains way north up towards up above seattle and we we're going to go back in and go back in there and stay there for a week so they've got horses they've got kayaks they've got bikes they got all kinds of stuff so yeah that sounds like a whole lot of fun right so it's like okay so we, we start to sketch it out so <laughs> I go on the website, you know, and the biggest thing that I start to see is that number one, um, phones most of the time don't really work up there. Um, uh, and, uh, and there is no TV or anything because they're down in the Valley. There's no reception for anything. So they tell you, you want to make sure to, to, um, to have maps and all the information secured, hard copies in your hand. It's, you're not going to get reception. You're not going to get anything out of here. And it's like, wow, that, all of a sudden that sounds like a, a real blessing to me. <laughs> like, wow, that's kind of nice. The noise level is down. Um, and and then I've now called them a couple of times. They've never called me back. And I'm 
and and my wife says what's funny you're going to rent a room for a week you think they would be trying to call you back and i said no i i think if you live in that environment they live in nothing becomes urgent uh, yes they have horses they've got a ranch they got you know 40 50 acres 100 acres whatever uh, all those things are absolutely true and and they're all keep you busy that would be the highest demand load somebody calls up and said yeah i uh, I want to come up and rent a place. Why they'll probably say, oh, okay, well, we'll put that on the list. And then later on this week, we'll call them back. <laughs> the level of urgency, the level of response would most certainly start to change. I don't know if it's good for business or not. When I saw online, it didn't look like they had a, a whole lot of opportunities open to, uh, it looks like they stayed pretty busy, but then they don't accommodate hundreds of people. They only accommodate like, you know, uh, maybe two dozen people at the most. Um, maybe not even that many. So, yeah, to have a full schedule w wouldn't take wouldn't take um, a, a lot of people going there, and then uh, and I, it probably just because it's local to northern part of the state of Washington, it's a lot closer. Now, I just showed you a way of thinking about something with different parameters. I, I said a reaction, and then I told you like, let's take a look into this and let's see how this unfolds. Let's look a little bigger. Up uh, on the first side, it's like, why can't I just call right now? Why can't I just text it in and get it all squared away in 15 seconds? Because I might work, well, I don't, but the world here might work that way, but I doubt their world works that way. As a matter of fact, I know it don't. So it's like, wow, because they don't have reception. So it's like, wow. So they've got a call number somewhere in an office that I don't know if it's a landline or a cable or what, but they have a call number somewhere you can call into and leave a message. But other than that, they don't run around using their phones because they don't work. So it's like, wow, must be a cable coming in from something or another. Like, wow, that's very interesting. Um, you can fly in by helicopter <laughs> for $700 a person. Uh, but, you know, um, yeah, you, you, the way of thinking is why Deborah and I like to travel is we get to different worlds, different countries, and we look at them and we go, wow, how do I fit in here? Uh, I see so many people that I run into traveling. They're saying, this is not like America. And I'm going like, what, well, isn't that why you're here? <laughs> that it's nothing wrong with America. It's just like, if I think the whole world is like America, I've got a really small limit. I, I really need to get that bigger. So when Deborah and I got married, we decided, okay, uh, we're just going to go travel. And uh, yeah, uh, as long as we don't have that pandemic, it works out pretty good. So we travel around for several months. She has a business. She's a recording artist. She has a lot of productivity and paperwork work. So that takes up some of her time. I'm, I'm just another old guy. I don't do anything but maintain the house, build fences, help the neighbors out cleaning the neighbor's roofs and gutters, eh, things like that. I try to be in service in the community while she's busy doing her professional piece and having a lot of fun because music is, it's a very trying business, but it's a fun business. And most certainly it's a creative avenue. So that's a balance. And then all of a sudden we decide, okay, we're going to take a month. We're going to go somewhere. And uh, oh, do we have a lot scheduled out? Yeah, we lost two years out of our life. So, yeah, so most certainly uh, we've got a lot of travel plans. And when I say travel plans, it's not like just to, you know, go see the Eiffel Tower for heaven's sakes. No, for her travel plans is that she has done some recordings for a band in France. And so we want to go to France maybe and spend some time, see the Eiffel Tower maybe, but then spend time in the studio recording some more material. We can got the same arrangements in Germany, the same arrangements in Great Britain, the same arrangements in Australia and New Zealand. So it's a, it's a composite of saying, how do I take my experience and integrate it more into the world? Some interactive piece. Can I go somewhere, bring back part of it and kind of hang back? I go somewhere and bring it back in stories. I come back and do it. And then I start to look around and I say, wow, that's kind of interesting. They solve problems in their world this way. And we solve problems in our world this way. 
wow, that's kind of interesting. So now that there's more and more uh, reaction going on when our uh, highly dislocated world, uh, people don't have traditional pieces to balance onto. So now we see different areas, different regions of the United States, not just states, some counties, they're having huge reactions to one dilemma or huge reaction to too much heat or huge reaction to too much or the poor people in Texas trying to keep their water pipes from freezing when their houses were never built with insulation because they didn't need them. It's like we start to see that all in the past, we were very creative. All those humans, amazing. The world has created amazing that in our lifetime, well, my lifetime's 80 years so far. So I can see huge changes, but even people 30 and 40 years old see big changes in their time. We didn't have phones coming in until the 90s. So it's like in practical everyday use. So computers much later. So when you start to look at this whole game is is changing really very rapidly. And, and we, we can look at that and it's kind of like, wow, that's the experience here. And it might be a little overwhelming, but then you travel to foreign countries and you can kind of see, oh, they're on the same train, but in a different car, <laughs> right? They're somewhere down the line. They, they might be a little bit more ahead on some things or a little bit more behind on some things, but it's like, wow, it's kind of interesting. So it, it, it's, just, it's just kind of fun. It is kind of fun to see things are done a certain sort of way and we get it in our head that that's the right way, <laughs> our silly dichotomies. And then we travel to another country and we find out, oh, they think of that in a different sort of way. Wow. That's interesting. Right now, I'm not advocating anything, but right now, if you listen to the news, and I don't, but <laughs> I do get emails and communication with students, and for the most part, they're saying, you know, oh, where's the trust in our government going? Well, that kind of goes in cycles too, like everything else, you know. There were times when, when you know, the government was the greatest thing in the world, and then there there are times when, when, um, when, um, uh, Everybody's in doubt about, you know, nobody seems to know what they're doing. And that oscillates back and forth. And I remember our last trip to China, why everybody was was saying, you know, it's like we trust in our government because it solves problems. Right. It's like, wow, that's kind of interesting. So you here in the United States, I'm trying to share with them politely. I said, well, in the United States, we've heard that you've had a problem here, a problem there, a problem there. And then they come back and they have a total different view of that. And they say, yes, that was a problem. And, and we tried to do it locally and we screwed it all up. So we had to get the central government involved. It's like, oh, okay. Okay, I see that. I see that in the United States. The state has a problem and they try to fix the problem. And, and sometimes in the fix, they're counter to the federal. And then that winds up being a Supreme Court case at some point in time. And then that all kind of goes with the wind too, you know, when one day they're in favor of this way and next day they're in favor of this way. As a matter of fact, you know, it's like, you know, other than probably the Bible, the uh, Constitution has been interpreted so many different ways. Why it's kind of, kind of amazing when you start to say, well, this is a rule because we see uh, very creative ways to get around the rule and, and ways to reframe things and ways to, it's like, wow, it's kind of amazing uh, that we can marginalize things and work around them. All right, these were all the variables. If you have an empty space and you go into it and you think, I'm just gonna build the best birdhouse in the world in this empty space, there are a lot of variables I just shared with you. These are all gonna show up because you're still on the planet, you're still, got people around you. You've still got interaction. We're social creatures. If you build a better birdhouse, you're going to show it to everybody, right? And then some people are going to go, wow, that's really neat. That's amazing. And other people are saying, well, you know, uh, I, th I think the hole is too big. You're going to have problems or like, I, I have run into that already. I, I have birdhouses on my property, nine of them, and they have different size holes in them because if you want small birds, you need to have a small hole. The size of the hole makes a difference on what bird will come in there. If it's too big, a small bird won't go in there because he knows a predator could come in. They want to get something that makes them feel safe, right? 
So it's like, oh, okay. So I I have people come in and say, well, these got the right size hole in it, but those on that side of your house don't. It's like, wow, I guess I screwed up. You know, I must have put the wrong size hole in it. Um, <laughs> it's like, well, uh, I, I don't know. It just depends. I have small birds on that side, bigger birds on this side. And the blue jays can't get in there to eat their eggs. And it's like, it's, you know, we're building a little safe community here for a plethora of different type of birds. And and I'm not particularly a, a bird lover. It's just that we have a piece of property and I got time on my hands. So that's kind of what I'm doing. It's a range. I could just build a birdhouse or I could build variations or I could make deviations in it or I could start to get some da data and build smaller holes, larger holes. I could start to see how the community works. Are, are we going to have fights between the small birds and the large birds over worms? And well, they seem to get along pretty good, right? They they separate out a little bit. Um, I notice with a birdhouse with a couple, my one watches the front while the other goes and gets whatever and comes back and they switch off. They kind of run guard duty on the eggs. I can tell when there's going to be eggs in there. And then when the chicks come, there's nobody guarding them because they're both out getting food because the chicks are screaming for food all the time. So you start to watch the pattern of the way these things. So I have a range called birdhouses, which has complexity into it that has grown in it over the last 10 years. That's it. I have a lot of ranges. I've done a lot of things. I'm advocating you do a lot of things. You open up ranges, make them little hobbies, explore them. Squeeze all the potential you can out of that little package or as much as you would like. You don't have to become the expert, but you want to be able to get enough out of that to where you had experience that validates, I did this. Potential is simply, I did this. That's what it is. I've produced. I did something. I went out and there was something I didn't do, I did. That's potential. It's really pretty simple. Uh, people like to think it's mystical, magical. All of a sudden, uh, they're going to find... Um, they're going to get a lottery ticket. They're going to get, they're going to, they're going to do uh, whatever. Now, and, and sometimes it works out for some people, but a lot of times it doesn't, right? Right. And, and once again, I could tell you millions of stories, but we're going to really keep this short. I have a tendency to be very long winded. So we have a, a process that we've started into, and that's that new range. And, and we'll throw out some techniques in the blogs that basically I've come out with from research. Um, I'd like to tell you there's a lot of data. There's a lot of books that say more or less the same thing. There's an awful lot of books that say more or less the same thing that was written up 40 years ago. So it's like, wow. Um, I, and, and I try to read 40, 50 books a year or so. I've been targeting a lot more of like, what can we do with potential? How can we make something happen? And it's very, very interesting. Um, right now, we don't really have any really dynamic tools that just make it really simple and quick. Um, there's always a balance between this de defending what I have and creating what I don't have. It, and that risk, that little piece of risk is, is the toughest thing. So your relationship with you, the way you manage risk, your relationship with how you manage risk. And I'm not saying that you should be a risk taker because risk takers sometimes are foolish and they lose everything. I'm saying how you manage that. If you don't take a risk or you do take a risk, it's taking the right risk at the right time. That's more information, right? So it's not like change. I'm just going to go ahead and invest all my money in something or another. I'm going to buy a gold bullion. I'm going to like, 
okay all right sounds good whatever but you're you're just kind of going the swing you're taking everything over and you're making an investment and you're bringing all your threats and all your dilemmas and well i've only failed 20 times but this time it's going to be a success number 21 will be the winner okay maybe sometimes right but in that statement there's nothing to secure that success you really got to go into it a little deeper i have got friends that have gone into they make good money they got a good job they're very intelligent people they they do really really good they have extra money on the side they don't have a lot of commitments they have a lot of children have big families so so they're always investing in stuff and it's kind of like you know they sit there and they say this is going to be the thing you know chris you should buy in on this this is going to be the thing and they put you know a hundred thousand dollars into something and they do this that and the other and then then later on i'd say how that work out is it well this was the problem this was a problem this was a problem and they had this really long list of things that didn't allow them to generate the type of return they wanted to yeah and it and i really want to say and you didn't know that before you did it you didn't dig into the research you didn't find any of that out it didn't seem like any of that was a mystery some of those things that you're talking about i had already kind of crossed my mind but i didn't want to discourage you some of those things I actually mentioned to you and found that by mentioning it, you were already getting a little hostile. It's like, well, what do you know about that? It's like, I don't know anything, dude. It's like, go for it. Have fun. Um, it's it's intriguing. I'm talking about a relationship with another person or actually several people. <laughs> but the big issue is your relationship with yourself. What goes on up here? How's this? When you... When you're sitting there going forward consciously and say, this is it. And you talk to yourself into it and you can imagine all these great things. And that's what. Well, George A. Miller said that's seven plus or minus two bits of consciousness. That means the other 93% more or less could all be tied up in failure and risk. And you should be shooting yourself in the foot there very easily if you only have if you only have 7% of awareness. So it takes a little bit of research, takes a little bit of time. You've got to be able to be, to start to develop some structure. I hate to use the word discipline because then people think of that as hard work. And I, I guess uh, from the idea of, uh, of uh, uh, first law of thermodynamics, yes, most certainly it, it does burn calories thinking about things. Yes, it most certainly does. But if you're looking at accomplishing a goal, you really have got to recognize that the biggest variable you have to overcome is not out there. It's right in here. That's it. You got to overcome this beast right in here. This is the thing that gets in your way. And you got to be open to all of it. So kids are very open to finding where the limitations are. You got to be open again as a child, but where the potential is. How can this be a total different path for you? How can you venture into a different way of doing things? All right. One of the biggest clues I'm going to give you, and I'm going to shut up, is anytime that you can get support, interactive support on your side or not, doesn't necessarily matter technically if they're not on your side and it upsets you then technically it matters because they just influenced you but if they're against your view oh, i don't think that's going to work listen to what they have to say because you may gain information that would find a way to resolve around that most of the things i've gone into adventure i thought i had it all figured out I had a few people talk to me. It's asking, I work, you idiot, because this and this don't work, and this don't work, and this don't work. And they gave me answers to all kinds of stuff I didn't know. So I really had to put it on hold for a few months. And then all of a sudden, look at that and said, wow, I now found there is a pathway through this. I would have totally failed had it not been for their critiques. But when they critiqued it, they were talking down to me. That's the way it felt. Like, wow. And I felt that. 
And and I sit there and I go, because I work with feelings, energy, blah, blah, blah. I'm sitting there saying, right, it's interesting. Why is this all pulling in? This is a friend of mine. They're, they're sharing something with me. And all of a sudden, I'm 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 going to defensive. I don't want to hear them anymore. I don't want to talk to them. I got this all figured out. I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, now that's defensive. That thinking is defensive. Oh, wow. I need to shut my brain down and listen to them. Take some notes. And I don't know if they're right or wrong. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I need to research this. Not with them. Separate. And I may have to call a few other people. I'm going to have to dig a little deeper. The idea of having a new space is to be able to apply new concepts to it. New approaches. Okay? So I said enough. Um, so uh, happy Easter. And uh, and uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and email me. Chris, that's with two S's, C-H-R-I-S-S, at wizardscatch.com, W-I-Z-A-R-D-S-C-A-C-H-E. And I'd be glad to answer your questions. And uh, it's just fun. Every now and then I hear from some people from uh, the old days. And uh, and actually, uh, I, I remember that thing about teaching that class with kids because one of the parents or one of those kids who's now in college, but... Uh, one of the parents from one of those kids just called me, uh, emailed me the other day. I called them back and uh, just chatted with them for about an hour and caught up on what's going on in life and heard about, you know, and and telling me how their child in that one class still to this day, 15, 20 years later, still to this day, applies some of those concepts in their thinking, not just because they heard it from me, but because they heard it from me and the family all took classes and they applied it all in their life. So the kids were really, really good at finding workarounds on everything they had to do. And, and they're really good at it. So anyway, it's kind of nice. I love success stories. Uh, not always do they come in that way. But anyway, it's been fun. Thank you uh, very much. And uh, we'll look forward to... Uh, it's hard to find the end button, but this is the end. Okay. <laughs> and so we will uh, talk to you next month. Thank you very much.